people perform better when they know where they stand, mm -hmm. right? Even before you do any training or team building or who works well with who, just ranking people, they say, all right, I'm, I'm number 16 out of 20 salespeople. I don't like that feeling. I'm going to do better. It can't be stated enough, the importance of your ability, especially, I mean, whatever business you're in, but your ability to make sound, educated decisions. And the more granular you can get, the more educated the decision can be made and the more predictable the outcome is. What is going on Summit Chasers and welcome to another episode of the Summit Startup Success Series where we interview and highlight the founders of these businesses and the problems that they're solving, the trials and tribulations that they've had to go through from raising capital to adjusting their target market to adjusting their idea and how they got from where they were to where they are today. Sit back, get your notebooks out, prepare to be inspired and start chasing your summit. You prefer Pete, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. I was just making sure. Um, but thank you very much for, for coming on. Um, this is yeah. this is a big passion project for mine, the people that do what you do, the problem solvers, the dreamers, the innovators. You're creating our future. You're, you're, you're part of that. And uh, so I really am excited to be able to highlight um, what you do, what you've been through, the challenges you've had to overcome, and how you've got to where you are. Looking back um, from the inception of Vision AST, what was the, the pivotal moment where you guys you gained that momentum that you needed or you got that breathing room that allowed you to kind of ooh, we i think i think we're good yeah so that's a, always an interesting question when i reflect back and the pivotal moment was going to a trade show i said you know i'm going to be gone for a few days out of the store and um met some people i really liked and discovered everything I didn't know about what was in the market and what our who our competition was and what we were doing differently and, and got a ton of feedback uh, where if you guys could do this, if you could do this, you'd really have the market. If there were five things they said, if you could do this, we were doing four of them just on dumb luck, like it made sense to us when we built our platform. And I think a lot of that was because we were in the industry. We run several stores here's what our daily lives are like and here's the solution we need so we just followed that path when we built our platform not even knowing what was actually out there in the market at the time so we we found a couple people to to give us a try and of course stumbled along the way a lot of things we couldn't do pitfalls things you couldn't possibly foresee that slowed us down problems we had to solve with our platform uh, that kept it from being a marketable product for a period of time in the, on, a, on a grander scale. It was those relationships where people were willing to give us a try because they had the same idea almost. They were like, geez, I wish I had this. They were building reports manually with spreadsheets and things to track the data. We were very much built with that process of what we knew in the stores, but also we had so many people that wanted to help us when they just were like, you're going to help the industry. Let me help you help the industry kind of thing. And that reaction from people was kind of the aha moment. I don't have a lot of other experiences with starting businesses. I had my own ad agency, but people didn't say, geez, let me help you. Let me contribute for free. And I'll give you, you call me, I'm going to answer the phone and give you my feedback. But in this particular endeavor that's the experience we had early on is everyone wanted to see us build something that didn't yet exist and wanted to contribute to that so it was, it was very much so you identified a common problem and then you guys were the ones that put your hand up and said i'm going to solve it yes very much so and it's funny that the concept of you know when, when people have the same problem and they're like dang why didn't i think of solving this before Right. It's almost like a, a comedian when they hear a good joke, like, dang it, why didn't I think of that? In, in as much detail as you, as you want to give, kind of what was that main problem that you were you were solving? <laughs> uh, dealers run like the 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 spine, spinal column and the brains of a dealership is what they call a DMS, a dealer management system. It's software that all their inventory is in the system, all the pricing, all the parts and service inventory. Every repair order that's written is written up in the system. Um, all your customer information, all sales transactions occur within the system. Big, cumbersome systems, legacy systems that have all this data that could be put to good use, but 
no easy way to extract it in a digestible format, particularly in a retail environment where there's a million things going on. Your producers, as I call them, people uh, driving revenue, aren't sitting in an office in front of a computer for six hours trying to find performance data. They just won't do it if it's that difficult. The business historically has been, let's look back at what just happened last month, dust everything off, pick up the pieces and see if we made any money, what shakes out and we're already into the next one. You're always just kind of looking at what happened and what could we have done better rather than looking at what's happening right now and where can we shift mainstream to improve what we're doing here today to be more profitable. Managers can look at team performance at an enterprise level. If you have 20 stores, your C-suite can look at the enterprise performance in real time and say, all right, we're not pacing well for this month. Where are our trouble spots? You just, hey, people perform better when they know where they stand, mm -hmm. right? Even before you do any training or team building or who works well with who, just ranking people. They say, all right, I'm, I'm number 16 out of 20 salespeople. I don't like that feeling. Uh, I'm going to do better. It worked in our stores. So we've, we've gone into the market and helped a lot of people, you know, find that a uh, sweet spot where they're performing at a higher level just because they have the information. Mm -hmm. Not right. So you, you, well, I mean, the, 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 was the, the definition of a genius is taking rocket science and being able to simplify it. So an eighth grader or fifth grader can understand it. This is huge for a lot of, a lot of companies is the ability to make decisions in order to make good decisions. You need data specifically data in real time. So you allow them to take essentially lag measures, which is, behind you you can't do anything about it it's already happened and turning them into into more of a lead measure which you it's in front of you, you can do something about it in real time if, if somebody has that problem they have that pain they bring on your product what results can they expect since we pull 18 months of historical data we can see some good history there let's look at four months before they come on board and then what happens in the first 90 days and in gross profit we're showing lifts of anywhere from 10 to 15 percent in for the enterprise in the first 90 days on the platform. But that's before there's even time to see results of good sales training, um, team building, and things like that. It's just you know when everyone's being ranked in front of everybody else, they tend to do a better job. Also, what happens is the ability for dealers to look at some things that you normally wouldn't look at. There's certain products in F&I that um, are more profitable than others. There's mm -hmm. so many paths of least resistance that people can take where if, that may not benefit the dealer, dealer principal, dealership owner. Um, whereas if he, can, he or she can see the details of what products are being sold and what scenario um, to the benefit of the owner, um, that can make a huge difference for the operation overall. So that ju it just sh shines a spotlight on things that normally get measured with a single metric um, and really gets granular into what is adding up to that metric and the important aspects of uh, the details that get to the bottom line. And there's better ways to get there than others. It can't be stated enough, the importance of your ability, especially, I mean, whatever business you're in, but your ability to make sound educated decisions and the more granular you can get the more educated the decision can be made and the more predictable the outcome is because now you have more data points if i do this i'm more likely to get this and here's the proof here's the historical data of this so that's i mean that, that's huge and i can see how that would be i mean 15 percent increase in 90 days is pretty wild so when, you, when you started how has your 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 target market changed since you since the kind of the inception of this What's changed for us mostly is I was, I've mentioned these warranty companies that would bring us in to track their book of business with their dealer clientele. That is a great way to get into places, except if they lose the business, you lose the business, right? Mm -hmm. We were, we didn't have that direct relationship with the end user as much as we would like, who was the dealer. We really work with the dealer from day one, from onboarding to training and you know, act as though we're a reporting arm of that warranty company. Our target has become much more building relationships directly with the dealers and being a resource to that. And, you know, our focus has been customer success, client success. You know, 80% of our payroll is client success 
personnel. How do you, how do you judge the success of your your business? Is it probably you know lifetime value of a customer? Is it what, what is it? I'll let, I'll let you. A big measure for me is that low churn rate. If you can retain virtually everyone you bring on, you know you're doing the right thing. You know you've got a good platform, but also again I go back to that customer success. They're looking at you as a valued partner. When I was in the dealer world, you go through these, you know, holiday season into January where everything slows down and you say, do we really need this vendor? Do we really need this vendor? You know, you're looking to trim every expense you can think of. We haven't been affected by that knock on wood. Retaining those customers is a big deal. And, that, and certainly that leads to referrals. Um, one of the things without digressing too much that we do now to bring additional value is we've got such a large data set across our book of business that will um, really take it all and, you know, do an aggregate of every key metric across our whole book of business and provide quarterly. Here's what the industry is doing in your geographic area or with domestic uh, manufacturers. Here's 12 KPIs. You can go look at your numbers compared to what your peers are doing and see where you might need to improve or where you're knocking it out of the park. And, you know, that has really cemented our position as, you know, bringing added value because that's information that's hard for dealers to get. I like that, that focus of churn, like customer, customer, client churn rate. And that, that forces you to provide a better service. It forces you to take care of your clients. And then there's, there's something about like the simplification of just make it really easy for, for clients to work with us. Like make the pain of losing us greater than the pain of working with us no matter the time of year. More, more companies should have that focus and should have that focus earlier on as well. As opposed yeah, to just, just trying to sell how, something. It really is remarkable how many don't. And again, I had the good fortune of sitting on the other side where I was dealing with most of the vendors that served the dealership. So I knew the the pain points that I experienced and things I swore I would never put someone through. I can't imagine going through every day thinking someone needs us more than we need them. I, it doesn't mm -hmm. register with me. And that's a great learning lesson, um, especially for those if they want to get into business or they're starting their second business or improving their current business. Is it why or like what is your purpose? Like why are you in business right now? Is it just to to make money, or are you are you genuinely do you have a passion and a problem that you've seen that needs solving? So and this is why I'm so passionate about this is because individuals like you, you are on the front lines, you understand the problem. This is a, an interesting question. I I kind of pre pre prepped you for this question. Um, so it, there's a statistic where it's only eight percent of startups go on to become successful businesses, long lasting businesses. What makes Vision AST part of that eight percent? Part of it is um, faith. I think I just truly I just believe that if you put your mind to doing something, there's no people are out there finding success, building successful companies, uh, innovating, and if it's being done, why can't we be doing it too? And I really look at, at that simply. If they can do it, I can do it. And um, I just start every day like it's the first day and mm -hmm. come in with that same enthusiasm every day. And my team does. You know, it's not just me. It's certainly building a team of people that have the same, not the same. No one's going to have the same amount of um, having sold out to this passion and this dream as much as the founder, but close. I mean, there's, I'll, I'll sit in a meeting with everyone and realize I haven't said a word and everyone's getting all worked up on a solution in a positive way. Sometimes there's some, you know, frustration, but often it's like, here's a brilliant idea and everyone runs with it. It's a, a proud feeling like, wow, these guys believe in what we're doing just as much as I do. And I think that's, that's the key. And I found the right people through some good fortune, probably, but also people that are like-minded probably were drawn to me as I was drawn to them when we met. And it's, there's that synergy that, you know, really does exist. And, and you can you experience companies where it's lacking and you know it right away when you're dealing with them. And then, you know, we get feedback from clients I get feedback, like if I get a call from a client or I, I call them, 
someone on my team's name gets brought up right away, like they'll go out of their way to sing their praises and make sure I know how incredible they are and what a good job they do without fail. I don't ever have to call and say, Hey, how are we doing? It just naturally is the first part of the conversation is I just want to tell you how awesome Jess is and just, she's the best and she's been nothing but spectacular. And that just says it's the culture of a culture of people that believe that we will succeed. And, uh, that's a unstoppable force. I really, I really do think so. That, and that's such a strong sentiment that I don't think is valued enough because you could have the best, the best product. You could have the most innovative product that solves an immense problem, but if you don't have the right people on board, that it, it's not going to be solved. It's not like the, the world's not going to see it. It's not going to get out there or at least as quickly or it's not going to be as consistent. The message isn't going to be as consistent. The quality isn't going to be as consistent. Um, it, you can't have the idea without the people. This is going to seem like an odd place to get uh, inspiration from and, and, and learn a lesson from. But I think one of the best lessons to what you just alluded to, really, for, for startups, entrepreneurs, small business owners, it, it, there was a quote in, in Thor, the Marvel movie, Thor, where Odin, his, the, the Thor's dad, he said, Asgard isn't a place, it's the people. Right. So you can, it's, it's not just about, you know, how great your product is or how great, you know, the building is or how nice your office is or whatever this is. Right. It's, it's the, the people is what is going to make it ultimately make it, you know, abnormally successful. Where can people find Vision AST? How would they go about taking advantage of, of your, your, your product um, and get in touch with somebody so that they can have a, have a call or whatever your sales process is? Yeah, it's really simple. I mean, even the onboarding process is very simple. But uh, we're at visionast.com. Uh, the number here at the office is area code 518-375-2543. That'll reach me directly. Or, you know, there's six of us here that'll all answer the phone. It rings to everybody. So uh, we're, don't go to voicemail. You'll reach somebody that knows what they're talking about. And that's part of that customer success, client success that we talk about very personalized touch that we offer uh, and we're on LinkedIn and everywhere else you can possibly imagine. We're very flexible in finding ways to work with people. We believe so much in our product that we make onboarding very inexpensive, very quick, very simple, and there's nothing long-term about our agreements or anything. It's literally 30 days. It's not where it can say so or no one gets held hostage, but we know we can improve uh, your business performance and, and processes. And everyone that works for me, that works for this team, actually worked in retail automotive. So they know the business. So you're talking to someone that uh, knows your pain and suffering and knows uh, what success looks like. So reach out. We'd love to talk to you more about what we do. Well, that is called confidence in your service and the outcome you can provide, Pete. So that is absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on, Pete. I really appreciate it. And I wish you nothing but continued success. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. But I think one of the best lessons to what you just alluded to, really, for, for startups, entrepreneurs, small business owners, it, it, there was a quote in, in Thor, the Marvel movie, Thor, where Odin, his, the Thor's dad, he said, Asgard isn't a place, it's the people.